Alright, so in this video we're going to go through another example of using the first derivative test to find and classify critical points. So let's get started. As I get going writing the question here, I just want to highlight that I often switch between critical number and then saying critical point. In my mind, they're basically the same thing. Critical point to me usually means an x and the corresponding y value, but I often use it even when I'm referring to just the x value. So just know that I'm going to use those interchangeably and to not worry too much about them being any different in any way. All right, so for this problem, our task is to find and classify the critical numbers of the function w of x equals 4x plus 1 over x. So remember, our two tasks here are to find those critical numbers and then classify them as either local maximums, minimums, or neither. So if you feel like you might be able to do part of this, or at least take the derivative of this function, pause the video now and give that a try before we come back and do it together. All right, so first we're going to find the critical numbers, and the way we do that is by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. Along with that, we'll have to see if there are locations where the derivative is undefined that we need to include as critical numbers as well. All right, so in order to take the derivative, I'm going to first just rewrite the function. So instead of writing one over x, I'm gonna rewrite this as x to the negative one power. Since the x is in the denominator, I can move it up to the numerator and change the exponent to be a negative one. Now we can take the derivative using the power rule. So the derivative of 4x is just 4, and then the derivative of x to the negative 1, negative x to the negative 2, the negative 1 comes out front, and then we decrease that exponent by 1, so negative 1 becomes negative 2, and I'm left with negative x to the negative 2 power. Then I'm just going to rewrite this so it looks a little better. I'm gonna bring the negative exponent into the denominator and make it positive, so I'm writing this as 1 over x squared. Altogether, the derivative is 4 minus 1 over x squared. So before I even set this equal to 0 and look at where it is equal to 0, I want to notice that the derivative is undefined at 0. So if we plug in 0 into x, we'd be dividing by 0 here. So the derivative doesn't exist at x equals 0, and that means we're going to want to include x equals 0 as one of our critical numbers. All right, so let's find our other critical numbers by setting the derivative equal to zero. So I need to just solve for x. I'm going to move the one over x squared to the right-hand side. I'm going to multiply the x squared over. So I have four x squared equals one. Then I'll divide both sides by four. I have x squared equals one fourth. Now I just need to take the square root. So x is the plus or minus square root of one fourth which is just plus or minus one half. So it's either positive one half or negative one half. Okay, so we found all of our critical numbers. They are x equals zero. That's where the derivative is undefined. Then we have these two critical numbers from when the derivative is equal to zero, and that's at x equals one half and x equals negative one half. Apologies for the weird jump in the screen, but let's keep going. So we wanna classify these critical numbers. That's our second step after we found them. So we use the first derivative test to do this. Remember, we're going to draw these on a number line just to help us pick test points in each interval. And just to help us out, I'm also just gonna rewrite the derivative here. It's w prime of x equals four minus one over x squared, just since we're gonna need that for this part. If you didn't pause earlier, or if you didn't get this far when you were working on the problem, you might want to take a second and try to do this testing part on your own, but feel free to just keep following along if you want to see how I am doing it. So I'm going to choose a test point in each of the intervals that are created by the critical numbers. So my test points are negative one, negative one fourth, one fourth, and one. You might have chosen different test points, just make sure that they're inside the intervals. So remember, these critical numbers are the places where the derivative is zero or undefined. These are our options for local maximums or local minimums. And we know that in between these critical numbers, the derivative is doing the same thing. It's either always increasing or always decreasing. It can't switch because if it switched, the derivative would have to be zero there and that would have been a critical number that we would have caught. So we know that we just need to test one point in each interval. And specifically, we're testing for the sign of the derivative, and that's because we want to know if the derivative is positive, because that'll be increasing, or if the derivative is negative for decreasing. Okay, so I'm taking my test points and substituting them in to the equation of the derivative. 
This part is really tedious to talk through each of the individual steps for how I'm doing the computation, so I'm going to write them out, but you might want to pause if you're stuck on a certain step of how I did this, but I just want to highlight sort of the end goal, like the end thing of what we get. So for each of these, I am taking the value, the test point, and substituting it into the equation 4 minus 1 over x squared. So that's what you're seeing here is that I'm replacing x with negative 1, and I'm getting 3 as my solution. So this means that the derivative at negative 1 is 3, which is a positive value. The slope is positive there. So in this first interval, in the interval from negative infinity to negative 1 half, my derivative is positive there, meaning the function w is increasing on that interval. So I'm repeating this process for the other critical numbers. So I'm plugging in negative 1 fourth for x, and I'm getting 4 minus 1 over 1 16th, which doing some multiplying by the reciprocal is 4 minus 16, which is negative 12. So at negative 1 fourth, the slope is negative 12, the derivative is negative 12, that's a negative number. So we know in that interval between negative 1 half and 0, the function is decreasing. Oof, okay, we're halfway there. We're going to repeat this again. You'll see because the function has a squared in it, we're getting the same thing for the derivative at positive 1 fourth. I'm also getting negative 12. So the derivative in that third interval from 0 to 1 half is negative, so the function is decreasing there. All right, so just one more to go. When I plug in 1 into the derivative, I'm getting 4 minus 1 over 1 squared. That's 4 minus 1, which is 3. That's positive. So in my final interval from 1 half to infinity, the derivative is positive, meaning the function is increasing there. So something I like to do just to really make sure I understand what's going on is to draw myself some little pictures. So when the derivative changes from plus to minus, from positive to negative, we're at a local maximum. That's because we're doing increasing then decreasing. We can do something similar for the final set of intervals. So when the derivative is changing from negative to positive, that's a local minimum since we're changing from decreasing to increasing. As for what's happening at the critical point of zero, the function is decreasing until it gets to zero, then the derivative is zero there, and then it decreases some more. So that middle bit where we have the minus and then the minus, that doesn't correspond to either our maximum or a minimum. But that's just what happened in this case. In other cases, other examples, that might have been a local maximum or minimum. So we just always need to check all of the critical numbers. Okay, so all that's left is to just write our final answer to this question. So we say that the function w of x equals 4x plus 1 over x has a local maximum at x equals negative 1 half and a local minimum at x equals positive 1 half. So we've completed our task of finding the critical numbers and classifying them. Okay, well thank you so much for sticking with me if you've made it this far through the video. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.